Hey guys, how's it going? We are back with another video, and this time, if you haven't figured it out, we are going to be covering Esper Dungeon Crawling. Now, if you're a person like me, a Melvin player that just loves mechanics, or you're just someone who saw this deck and wanted to work on it, or wanted to build it, or didn't know what to do with it, there's a lot of good things you can do with this deck that's more than just reanimator, aristocrat stuff. There's so much good stuff with this. You can even break the game with this, where you can have infinite triggers and infinite draws. It, it's madness. It's, it, it's just amazing. So getting into it, we're going to cover a little bit about the dungeons first. So let's transition to the dungeons. So with the dungeons, we have three dungeons that came with this pre-constructed deck if you wanted to pick it up at your local game store or online. And the three dungeons that we have are the Tomb of Annihilation, the Lost Mine of something, and the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Two of these dungeons do not matter. Don't play them. They're kind of useless. So we're just going to focus on one dungeon. Okay, so to get into the Lost Mine of Fan Lever, see this is why I didn't try to say it, um, you're going to have the most benefit and it's the shortest route. So for this deck, we want to focus on getting the most uses out of this dungeon and our commander is going to help us get there to where you'll see let's get into the next section and for our next section we need a veteran not a rookie and who better than to lead us through this dungeon than Sephiroth of the hidden ways she's a three drop commander that came with the precon to cast her you only need one white one blue and one black she is a legendary creature human wizard with the effect of whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, venture into the dungeon. This ability triggers once every, no, once each turn, sorry. So what that means is if you put a creature into your graveyard for any reason during anyone's turn, you can venture into the dungeon. We'll get more into that in later. But her second effect is create undead. Whenever you complete a dungeon, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So let's look at why we want her and this specific dungeon on the field. Well, not the dungeon, but just her. So looking at Sephiris and Lost Mine of whatever it's called, I'm not going to butcher his name anymore. Um, you can see that this dungeon has four rooms. So the way this mechanic works is whenever you venture into the dungeon, you will select a dungeon, which we're choosing the Lost Mine, and you will select a room from there. So the first room is Cave Entrance, which allows you to scry one, which is look at the top card of your deck, choose whether to put it back on top or on the bottom. Then from there, when you venture to the dungeon again, you can choose between two rooms. You have the Goblin Lair and the Mine Tunnels. The reason why we're choosing this dungeon is because of this room, the Mine Tunnels. So the Mine Tunnels will give you a treasure token, which you can then sacrifice to get more mana. But the fact that you get that at the second room makes that really handy, and we're going to cover that later. So then the third room I would choose if I was going through this path, going through this dungeon, would be dark pool each opponent loses one life and you gain one life you know just something to increase your life will see if you want to take hits that's how it is since you're going through the right side after choosing the mine tunnels your other option is the fungi cavern target creature gets minus four minus O oh, until your next turn so since you can do this at any time, that might be helpful, but for me, I'm thinking I want to kill my opponents faster. They can take one life, I'll gain one life. Then at the end of the dungeon, you have the temple of something I'm not going to pronounce, where you draw a card. And once you enter that last room, you have now cleared the dungeon. So when you clear the dungeon, Sephiroth allows you to look into your graveyard and play any creature that you have in your graveyard onto the battlefield for free. Eh? And in our next segment, it will be Finn or Fire Princess, Vault of Bones. 
So if you haven't seen that episode of Adventure Time, you really should watch it. It's going to show you the difference between the two different types of people that either like to sneak around and dungeon crawl, or the people who just like to run in, guns blazing, and burn everything down. <laughs> so first we're going to look at cards that will speed up your experience in the dungeon, either causing effects to trigger more times or just allow you to speed through the dungeon. So first we're going to look at Tesa Karlov. Tesa Karlov is an amazing legendary creature that is the reverse of another card on this list. So Tesa Karlov, also known as Death Harmonicon, has this effect. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability or of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time. So when looking at Sephiroth, whenever a creature goes into the graveyard, it causes Sephiroth to trigger, allowing you to venture through the dungeon. So if you have a creature on the field, let's say, and it dies, there are plenty of creatures we'll show in a moment, but if one of those creatures dies and goes into the graveyard, Sephiris will trigger twice, which means you will go through two rooms, not one. Next we have Panharmonicon, which is the opposite of Tesa Karlov, the original. So Panharmonicon reads, if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So as you can see how Tesa Karlov and Panharmonicon are pretty much the same but in different aspects. The thing with Panharmonicon is, is that there are creatures that trigger when they enter the battlefield. There are a lot of ETB effects, as they're called for short, where just the creature or another creature entering the battlefield will trigger you to venture through the dungeon and Panharmonicon will trigger that ability twice. What's amazing about this is that with the dungeon that we've selected, the Lost Mine, if you have both Tesa Karlov and Panharmonicon on the field at the same time, you literally go through that dungeon in one shot. If a creature dies on your side of the field, that's two rooms, and then if a creature enters the battlefield, then that's another two rooms. From that creature entering the battlefield, let's say Sephiroth triggers the second time. So when you clear the dungeon, she brings a creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Well, then Panharmonicon says if anything triggers, it triggers again. So that dungeon activation is going to trigger twice. And then lastly, we have Hama. I don't know how to say her last name, but Hama <laughs> Pashar, Rune Seeker, allows rooms to trigger twice. So like we showed with the Lost Mine, how it has the cave entrance says scry one that will now scry two because that room is going to trigger twice with the mine tunnels instead of creating one treasure token you're going to create two treasure tokens for a dark pool each opponent is going to lose two life and you're going to gain two life and then for the temple the exit of the dungeon you're going to draw two cards so you see how this is going to ramp things up and next we're going to get into the creatures that are going to emphasize these three cards and make it a lot better for you to speed through that dungeon and go in guns blazing and burn the whole dungeon down. So as you can guess, recruiting all adventures. So for our next segment we're going to focus on three really powerful cards in this deck. And we're not going to cover everything because that's going to take too long, but we're going to cover the three most important creatures. So first up we have Radiant Solar. Radiant Solar is a six drop angel, five colorless or five of any color, and one white. She is a creature angel with flying and lifelink, and her effect reads, when Radiant Solar or another non-token creature enter the battlefield under your control, venture into the dungeon. So this is what I was alluding to with Panharmonicon. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield, Panharmonicon is going to make this trigger twice. So for her, when Radiant Solar enters the battlefield, you're going to go into the dungeon. Or at least you're going to, you know, go into another room. But then if another creature enters, you go into another room. Panharmonicon, that's two rooms. So if you play two creatures, 
you have cleared Lost Mine, and now Sephiroth gets you another creature from the graveyard, and that graveyard enters the battlefield, which then triggers Radiant Solar. So when you see creatures that have, when this creature enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon, paired up with Radiant Solar, this is going to just make you clear dungeons super fast. You're going to get all these effects. You're going to get your graveyard back onto the field. And you're going to have a hard time filling up your graveyard to then bring creatures from your graveyard back onto the battlefield. Next we have uh, Borrowing of Clan Under? Under? I don't know how to say that. Like I said, these cards need phonetic spellings. Um... <laughs> But Borrowin is a legendary creature dwarf cleric that costs four to drop, two of any color, one white, one black. And Borrowin uh, reads, when Borrowin enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. So like I was saying, enters the, dun enters the battlefield, you move into a dungeon with Radiant Solar. That's now technically two triggers, but with panharmonicon that would technically be four well two from borrowing two from radiant solar but borrowing's other effect is when borrowing attacks return up to one creature with mana value of three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield if you've completed a dungeon so when you've cleared lost mine that stays on the board at all times you have completed a dungeon so any effects that allow you to target dungeon clearing will activate. It's kind of tricky to say, and I don't want to get into the long logistics of it, but as long as you've cleared Lost Mine once, when these effects trigger, and there are some other creatures that have this effect, or something similar, um, something happens. So for Borrowin, Borrowin is a mini Sephiris. So if Sephiris dies, because she costs three or less, you can send her to the graveyard while Borrowin's on the field, and then Sephiris will come back from the graveyard, and that's how you achieve synergy. So, looking at another creature, we have Chattering Skeletons. Chattering Skeletons is a skeleton creature that costs four to play, but we're not really worried about that. So it's three colorless, one black, and its effect reads, when Chattering Skeletons dies, venture into the dungeon. So this is what I was talking about with Tesa Karlov. So Tesa Karlov and Sephiroth are going to trigger multiple times because Chattering Skeletons, when it dies, you venture into the dungeon and then Sephiroth has, when a creature, it goes into the graveyard, into your graveyard, sorry, then venture into the dungeon. So Tesa Karlov will trigger them both twice. You see how this is going to rapidly <laughs> I was going to say rapid fire, um, allow you to just sprint through the dungeon, pretty much. This this turns a four room dungeon into a two creature dungeon where you're just going to be moving quickly. And then with Hama, you're going to have those rooms trigger twice. So there's a lot of creatures like this that came out in uh, AFR. I won't, like I said, I won't get into all of them, but I just wanted to highlight these three because with these three, you can see how fast you're going to clear through the dungeon and how it's not going to take a lot of effort. You're just going to need to get creatures into the graveyard after that. And for our last segment, we have Gimme the Experience. So here we're going to just discuss some of the options you have when it comes to creatures that are going to fill up your graveyard or cards that you can use to support and fill up your graveyard. Cards such as Org Lore Mage, Entomb, Buried Alive, and Final Parting are cards that you can use to specifically search for cards from your deck and put them directly into your library. So if you need something to reanimate with Cyrus' effect, um, like we saw with Radiant, what was it? Uh, Radiant Solar, the Angel. Um, it had a second ability where you could discard it from your hand and still venture through the dungeon, putting it in the graveyard. But sometimes you just want to put specific cards into the graveyard or specific creatures that you can use for bonus added effects. And those creatures would be our cycle of sacrifice creatures. 
So here we have Plague Crafter, Plague Crafter, sorry, Demon's Disciple and Merciless Executioner. Oof, hard to say. So Plague Crafter, Demon's Disciple, Merciless Executioner, and then we have two more cards after that. All have the same effect where when they enter the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. That's their main goal. With Plague Crafter, it can be creature or planeswalker, and each player who can't discards a card. Luckily, you know, he's a little bit stronger, but the other creatures that we have, like Demon's Disciple, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice creature or planeswalker. Merciless Executor, when Merciless Executor enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Then we have Slum Reaper, which has the same effect. When Slum Reaper enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. And then finally we have Fleshbag Marauder, which has the exact same effect. The reason why these creatures are good are because when they enter the battlefield, you can choose to sacrifice that creature. So you will get the enter the battlefield effect from a creature like Radiant Solar and then off that enter the battlefield trigger from another creature entering the battlefield you're gonna then select a creature to sacrifice so then play crafter for example you choose play crafter play crafter dies it goes to the graveyard it triggers Saris and when you have Tasa Karlov that's gonna trigger twice so on top of that it's also clearing out your opponent's field at least you know, maybe if they have creatures, hopefully they have creatures if they're playing a creature heavy deck, or if they're using tokens, they're gonna sacrifice that token, which is gonna allow you to attack and not have anything to get in the way. Then with the rest of the creatures that just focus on sacrificing a creature, just having multiples will give you a way to either draw into them or to search for them with our cards that we were using before, like Buried Alive and Tomb, etc. They're going to allow you to put those creatures into the graveyard automatically so that they'll be targets for Saris. Or if you draw into them, you can just use them. And then when they go to the graveyard, you have them for later. Another thing to note is that three of, well, four of them actually, um, are targets for Borrowin. Because Borrowin, whenever we complete a dungeon, you get a creature with three mana costs or lower, Plague Crafter, Demon's Disciple, Merciless Executor, and Fleshbag Marauder are all three mana costs. Two colorless, one black. So they're targets for Borrowin, where once you get them back on the field, they do the same thing again, and they propel you through the dungeon. Overall, I think this deck is a ton of fun. Whenever I've played it, it does have a slow start, um, but even with that slow start, if you add in the right ramp package or the right card draw engines, uh, blue especially has a lot of card draw engines, black has a lot of card draw, um, you have artifacts to mana ramp and to card, you know, add to card draw, there's, there's so many things you can do to help speed up the deck, but um, once the deck gets going and you start clearing that dungeon over and over and over, um, Lost Mine being four rooms just becomes, you know, a simple, I do this, I get rewarded. And that's the, the thing, good thing I like about this deck is that you feel like you're being rewarded for playing the deck. You know, by getting creatures back from the graveyard, by making treasure tokens, by drawing cards, by hitting your opponents for one or two even... You know, and, and just that added bonus of of the synergy of how all the cards work together really make this deck worth playing. And I've had fun every time I've used it, where once I get all my pieces on the field, it just it just it's like turbocharged. And I'm clearing a dungeon like five to seven times on a turn and I can even do that on other people's turns um, with cards like Ashnot's Altar or other sack engines that I can use on my opponent's turns uh, so I can just ditch a creature clear a dungeon with Sephiroth get another creature back protect my creatures you know draw more cards make more mana there are so many ways to just combo with this deck and I really hope people look into it more as something that's fun because we didn't get a lot of dungeon cards. Most of the dungeon cards were all in white, black, and blue where green had like I 
think three or four cards that targeted the dungeon and then red only had one card uh that was a legendary creature so i think this deck definitely inspired me to play more dungeon mechanics even though you know this coming from dungeons and dragons um i really hope wizards makes more sets like this or at least makes more ways for me to go into the dungeon in other colors you know maybe red and green as a combination green and white as a combination you know other color combinations because as much as i love white blue black um i feel like it just took precedence over all the colors and we never got that second set either which i'm pretty sad about because i, I really like this dungeon mechanic and i want more you know and it's like i never know when we're gonna get more but for what we have right now man it's so good it's so good and it's so fun so that's it for me i hope this was better than the first video i did i hope the editing was better um i don't know what type of style i'm gonna go with but at least for right now i think i can do this a lot more i think i can do this a lot faster <laughs> but um hopefully i can do faster shorter videos but i do want to make sure like that the mechanics are explained, the thoughts are explained, and and the reason why you know the deck functions the way it does, or maybe the mechanic functions the way it does, and ways to just improve it or or add to it. Because from what everything I saw on EDH Rec, Tesa Karlov and Panharmonicon were not in any of the decks, even the um, the Aristocrat decks, the Graveyard decks, the uh, the uh, other decks that people had had put up on the site none of them had taste of karlov or panharmonicon and that to me was just kind of questionable especially with radiant solar being in the deck you'd want panharmonicon to trigger it twice um you know with saris you you want taste of karlov since they're in those colors but yeah that's enough for me i've talked enough um time to get to you know post editing and try to add these effects and hopefully i did a good enough job so if I did, leave a like, subscribe. I'm going to be doing more of these videos. If not, you know, tell me in the con in the comments where uh, where I could have did better or where I can improve. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.